Caddis Maximus here. This time I'm going to do a quick test. I've been uh, was surprised about the performance of this carbide tooth uh, Milwaukee uh, demolition sawzall blade when I was cutting through hardened steel Tapcon screws and my review of it. I had ordered this big, this is a number 15 master lock. This is a big three inch, seven sixteen shackle. This is just under a half an inch. Otherwise, uh, about 11 millimeters. So big heavy duty stainless steel lock. These, they've been revising them to have a different uh, ball bearing locking mechanism versus the older traditional mechanism and a little more protection for the core. These are terrible master locks. They have no pick resistance. But my biggest issue here was I got this key and it was like really flat. So not only is it easy to pick, it, this one came with like the world's worst key that you could use like a paper clip or street cleaner bristle. So I thought... I don't want to use this. It was more for a big lock just to be imposing. This isn't the type of thing for big pick resistance. It's more for, you know, transients and, uh, you know, kind of people like that just to be a big imposing lock. And this is going to be for ground contact or near the ground. And I live in a very rainy area. I was just so disappointed with the key. And, and even though I got this on sale for 15 bucks, like on closeout, I was pretty stoked. I was so disappointed with the keys that I decided that I'm going to go ahead and do a test for science. I'm going to do a couple videos here just because uh, I kind of want to and trying to do a little bit shorter videos. One person commented, you know, it, it isn't stainless steel softer than uh, alloy or standard, I should say, tool steels. And the in answer is yes. When you add enough chromium and nickel to steel to really make it stainless that prevents it from getting as hard as standard carbon steels and people who know about knives know that no matter what type of stainless steel you use that knife will not be as sharp or stay as sharp as long as a high carbon tool steel knife it can be such a difference that even the very hardest you know 420 high carbon stainless steel or any of the other special versions they use are going to be 10 to 20 Rockwell points away from just a weak form of carbide, not something like titanium cobalt carbide. So I'm suspecting the Sawzall blade is going to go through this in almost no time. Now I will be doing driving this blade with something proper. Once again, the 6536, 1500 watt, 13 amp, two horsepower orbital super Sawzall. And so this first video is just going to be me just cutting through the shackle to see how fast uh, you can get through the shackle. Obviously, this is hanging off a chain. It's going to be more difficult to use something like a you know a cordless reciprocating saw, but it's kind of the point that carbide tooth uh, blades are pretty darn effective, is what I'm finding out. And depending on how well it does just across the shackle, I may do another video for tomorrow of attempting to use this blade, maybe the whole thing. Uh, to cut straight down through the middle of the lock body, just through this whole cross section, all these stainless steel plates. It's a real shame what Master Lock does with the cores, especially with like the retail prices on these big. I mean, this is a huge lock. This is one of the largest locks Master Lock physically manufactures. But you know, just to have the terrible lock cores in them, it's really just totally nonsensical. Especially on something else where like all these laminations are stainless steel, all eight rivets are stainless steel. I mean, this is a lock that really could last for decades and unfortunately it's pretty darn insecure. Although it was cheap, it was 15 bucks on closeout. Anyway, let's go take a look. Part of the whole point is that people get pretty far into locks and really with modern power tools, it doesn't really matter what the lock is. Or what kind of coil to saw it off. And that's the deal with these carbide tip saws, all blades, and massively powerful cordless tools. Um, even though they make a lot of noise, it's only for a couple of seconds. Whenever doing this type of operation, always wear safety glasses, especially when you're going to have hot pieces of metal actually uh, flying about. And the real issue with these old master locks, you only have to cut one side in order to get it to... Uh, uh, get it, the whole lock body to come open. Really, you would cut the part of the side of the shackle that usually stays in the lock body. So let's see how fast we can get through this with this blade here. Oh, 
already finding it's actually kind of hard to get the blade to want to get started in this. Surprisingly, that took a little bit longer than I expected. So, a couple of things. I was initially going to redo the task because it was wobbling around so much, but then I realized that's actually uh, more realistic because the lock is not going to be held in the vise if that's ever happening. Um, and it is pretty hard. The stainless steel, obviously, that they're choosing for a lock shackle is going to be probably 420 high carbon or some other specialty grade. They don't advertise what exact steel that they're using, except for we know it is still softer than carbide. I also had the reciprocating saw in orbiting mode, which was a mistake because that was causing the blade to want to bounce excessively, making it harder to get it started. And it was also the bouncing action was causing the carbide teeth to want to chip um, versus cut. And so I probably will do another test, probably with a shorter blade or maybe the end of this blade, uh, through the body, making sure I have orbiting turned off and put the blade in upside down to see how long it lasts. Let me zoom in just a little bit here so we can get a good look at the blade. There you go. And we can see part of that bouncing, we can see it was chipping the teeth like some of them are really pretty well broken up. Uh, so definitely tore this blade uh, pretty good. But nonetheless, the carbide was still just so much harder, it went right through that. So anyway, that was the end of this video. just wanted to see, I've been wanting to actually do some more testing with these carbide blades to really see what they'll take. And certainly we'll cut through a 9 16 uh, stainless steel shackle of a padlock. And don't buy these master locks, but just to show that, you know, stainless steel is really for when you're near the ocean where... Uh, the lock corroding and not being able to open it is a, as big of an issue as having one that may not be as secure and that somebody can pick because really most locks, uh, you know, it's just preventing easy access. You know, it's not, you know, you're not doing it for a high security facility or something, you know, because anybody who's going to have enough skills to really be a good lock picker, many times will have some type of, you know, hydraulic bolt cutters or something that's going to be much faster and quieter and easier than ever trying to pick any lock. So it doesn't matter how hard it is to pick. And these carbide blades really, even if you burn them up, it doesn't matter. You know, that's 10 bucks and really kind of surprised. So these will cut through quite a bit of stuff. And I am curious to see if I do a better job not having it orbiting and bouncing on the teeth, if I can get them to last a little bit longer. So anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.